recognizable feature of a human being, or any other organism, like height, complexion, shape of hair, color of eyes, and shape of nose and chin, etc., are called characters or traits. Variations Although the offsprings inherit the characters or traits of the parents and resemble them very closely, but the resemblance is not complete in all respects. The offsprings are never a true copy of the parents. In fact, no two individuals are exactly alike and the members of any one species differ from one another in some characters, or traits, or the other. These differences are known as variations. So, from the biological point of view, variation is the occurrence of differences among the individuals of a species. For example, people have different heights. Their complexion, type of hair, color of eyes, shape of nose and shape of chin also show differences. The differences in the characters, or traits, among the individuals of a species is called variation. For example, human height is a trait which shows variation. This is because some people are very tall, some are less tall, some have medium height, some have short height whereas others are very short. The variation is a necessity for organic evolution. Accumulation of variations. The reproduction of organisms produces variations. The variations produced in organisms during successive generations get accumulated in the organisms. The significance of a variation shows up only if it continues to be inherited by the offspring for several generations. This will become clear from the following example. Suppose a bacterium produces two bacteria by asexual reproduction. Again suppose that one of the offspring bacterium has a variation due to which it can tolerate a little higher temperature, or little more heat, than the other one. Now, this variation of little more heat resistance will go on accumulating in the offspring of successive generations of this bacterium. And this will ultimately give rise to a variant of bacteria which will be highly heat resistant and able to survive even at very high temperatures. The great advantage of variation to a species is that it increases the chances of its survival in a changing environment. Heredity The transmission of characters, or traits, from the parents to their offsprings is called heredity. In most simple terms, Heredity means continuity of features from one generation to the next. Two parents, a male and a female, are involved in sexual reproduction. The sexually reproducing organisms produce sex cells or gametes. The male gamete called sperm fuses with the female gamete called ovum to form a zygote which gradually develops into a young one, or offspring, showing some similarities with the parents. Actually, the hereditary information is present in the sex cells of the parents. Thus, gametes constitute the link between one generation and the next, and pass on the paternal, fathers, and maternal, mothers, characters or traits to the offspring. This relation that continues to exist between successive generations is referred to as heredity. Inherited Traits Inheritance is the transmission of genetically controlled characteristics, or traits, from one generation to the next. Gregor Mendel was the first scientist to make a systematic study of patterns of inheritance which involved the transfer of characteristics from parents to progeny. He did this by using different varieties of pea plants which he grew in his garden. Some of the characteristics, or traits, of the pea plants whose transmission to progeny was investigated by Mendel were height of pea plant or length of stem of pea plant, tall or dwarf, shape of seeds, round or wrinkled, and color of seeds, yellow or green. A yet another contrasting characteristic, or traits, investigated were colors of flowers, white or violet. Mendel chose pea plants for studying inheritance because pea plants had a number of clear-cut 
differences which were easy to tell apart. Rules for the inheritance of traits. Mendel's contribution. Mendel studied the inheritance of characters or traits in various generations of pea plants cultivated by him. First we will discuss, monohybrid inheritance, which concerns the inheritance of a single characteristic, or single trait, such as plant height. Monohybrid inheritance. In order to trace the inheritance of a single pair of contrasting characteristics among the pea plants, like tall stem and short stem, Mendel crossed, crossbred, the purebred pea plants differing in these traits and noted their occurrence in the progeny of succeeding generations. Mendel first crossed purebred tall pea plants with purebred dwarf pea plants and found that only tall pea plants were produced in the first generation or F1 generation. No dwarf pea plants, or short pea plants, were obtained in the first generation of progeny. From this Mendel concluded that the first generation, or F1 cross, showed the traits of only one of the parent plants, tallness. The trait of other parent plant, dwarfness, did not show up in the progeny of first generation. Mendel then crossed the tall pea plants of the first generation, F1 generation, and found that tall plants and dwarf plants were obtained in the second generation, or F2 generation, in the ratio of 3 ratio 1. In other words in the F2 generation, 3 fourth plants were tall and 1 fourth were dwarf. Mendel noted that the dwarf trait of the parent pea plant which had seemingly disappeared in the first generation progeny, reappeared in the second generation. Mendel said that the trait of dwarfness of one of the parent pea plant had not been lost, it was merely concealed or suppressed in the first generation to re-emerge in the second generation. Mendel called the repressed trait of dwarfness as recessive trait and the expressed trait of tallness as the dominant trait. Mendel also noted that all the pea plants produced from the hybrid tall parents of F1 generation were either tall or dwarf. There were no plants with intermediate height or medium height in between the tall and dwarf plants. In this way, Mendel's experiment showed that the traits, like tallness and dwarfness, are inherited independently. This is because if the traits of tallness or dwarfness had blended, or mixed up, then medium-sized pea plants would have been produced. Mendel's monohybrid inheritance experiment is that the ratio of tall plants to dwarf plants in the F2 generation is 3 ratio 1. Since tallness is a dominant trait and dwarfness is a recessive trait, so we can also say that the contrasting progeny in the F2 generation occur in the ratio of 3 dominant to 1 recessive. The ratio 3 ratio 1 is known as the monohybrid ratio. Explanation of results of monohybrid inheritance. Mendel said that each trait is determined by a pair of factors. This means that the purebred tall pea plant has two factors TT for the trait of tallness, and the purebred dwarf pea plant also has two factors TT for the trait of dwarfness. The factors of inheritance of tallness TT separate into two gametes T and T, and the factors for inheritance of dwarfness TT separate into two other gametes T and T, the traits are transmitted to progeny through these gametes. The gametes of tall pea plant then cross with the gametes of the dwarf pea plant by the process of fertilization to form zygotes which then produce various progeny in the F1 generation, or first generation, which consists of all tall plants. In the F1 generation, all the progeny plants have factors TT in which T is the factor for tallness which is a dominant trait. Since all the plants in the F1 generation have the factors TT, so all of them are tall. The small letter T represents recessive trait of dwarfness, which does not show up in first generation in the presence of dominant trait T. When two hybrid, Tall pea plants, TT, produced in the first generation, F1, are now crossbred with each other, then they will produce second generation, F2, pea plants. 
This again happens by the separation of factors of inheritance of these tall plants into individual gametes and then crossing of the gametes during fertilization. In the F2 generation, or second generation, the pea plants produced have genotype or inheritance factors TT, TT, TT and TT. Now, the plants having genotype TT, TT and TT all contain the factor T for dominant trait, tallness, so all the three plants, TT, TT and TT, are tall. The plant having the genotype TT has both factors T for the recessive trait, dwarfness, so it is a dwarf plant. Please note that though a single copy of factor T is enough to make a plant tall but both copies of factor T, that is TT, are necessary to make a plant dwarf, or short. In the F2 generation, we get one plant having genotype TT, two plants having genotype TT and one plant having genotype TT. So, the genotypic ratio in monohybrid cross will be 1 ratio 2 ratio 1. Again, in the F2 generation, we get three tall plants and one dwarf plant. So the phenotypic ratio in monohybrid cross will be tall plants, dwarf plants is equal to 3 ratio 1. Dehybrid inheritance. The results of dehybrid cross enabled Mendel to formulate his second law of inheritance which is called the law of independent assortment. According to Mendel's second law of inheritance. In the inheritance of more than one pair of traits in a cross simultaneously, the factors responsible for each pair of traits are distributed independently to the gametes. Dehybrid inheritance involves the inheritance of two pairs of contrasting characteristics, or contrasting traits, at the same time. The two pairs of contrasting characteristics chosen by Mendel were shape and color of seeds, round yellow seeds, and wrinkled green seeds. In order to trace the inheritance of two pairs of contrasting traits, Mendel crossed pea plants having round yellow seeds with pea plants having wrinkled green seeds and noted their occurrence in the succeeding generations of pea plants. Mendel first crossed purebred pea plants having round yellow seeds with purebred pea plants having wrinkled green seeds and found that only round yellow seeds were produced in the first generation. No wrinkled green seeds were obtained in the F1 generation. From this it was concluded that round shape and yellow color of the seeds were dominant traits over the wrinkled shape and green color of the seeds. When the F1 generation pea plants having round yellow seeds were crossbred by self-pollination, then four types of seeds having different combinations of shape and color were obtained in second generation or F2 generation. These were round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green seeds. Mendel collected a total of 556 F2 seeds and counted them shape-wise and color-wise. The ratio of each phenotype, or appearance, of the seeds in the F2 generation is 9 ratio 3 ratio 3 ratio 1. This is known as the dehybrid ratio. Mendel observed that he had started with two combinations of characteristics in seeds, round yellow and wrinkled green, and two new combinations of characteristics had appeared in the F2 generation, round green and wrinkled yellow. On the basis of this observation, Mendel concluded that though the two pairs of original characteristics, seed shape and color, combine in the F1 generation but they separate and behave independently in subsequent generations. How do these traits get expressed? Genes are responsible for the characteristic features, or traits, of an organism, plant or animal. The characteristics or traits of parents are transmitted to their progeny, offsprings, through genes present on their chromosomes during the process of sexual reproduction. Genes work in pairs. There is a pair of genes for each characteristic of an organism, one is dominant gene and the other is recessive gene. Each parent possesses a pair of genes for each characteristic on a pair of chromosomes. However, each parent passes only one of the two genes of the pair for each characteristic to its progeny through gametes. 
Thus, the male gamete and female gamete carry one gene for each characteristic from the gene pairs of parents, which are located on the pair of chromosomes. But when a male gamete fuses with a female gamete during fertilization, they make a new cell called zygote with a full set of genes, on a full set of chromosomes. This zygote grows and develops to form a new organism having characteristics, or traits, from both the parents which it has inherited through genes. The two genes, or pair of genes, responsible for a particular characteristic are always present on the corresponding positions of the pair of chromosomes. A gene is the section of DNA on a chromosome which codes for the formation of a protein controlling a specific characteristic, or trait, of the organism. Suppose a plant progeny has gene for the characteristic called, tallness. Now, the gene for tallness will give instructions to the plant cells to make a lot of plant growth hormones. And due to the formation of excess of plant growth hormones, the plant will grow too much and hence become tall. On the other hand, if the plant has the gene set for dwarfness, then less plant growth hormones will be produced due to which the plant will grow less, remain short and hence become a dwarf plan. Sex Determination A person can have a male sex or a female sex. The process by which the sex of a person is determined is called sex determination. Genetics is involved in the determination of the sex of a person. This can be explained as follows. The chromosomes which determine the sex of a person are called sex chromosomes. There are two types of sex chromosomes, one is called X chromosome and the other is called Y chromosome. A male, man or father, has one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. This means that half the male gametes or half the sperms will have X chromosomes and the other half will have Y chromosomes. A female, woman or mother, has two X chromosomes, but no Y chromosomes. This means that all the female gametes called ova, or eggs, will have only X chromosomes. The sex of a child depends on what happens at fertilization. If a sperm carrying X chromosome fertilizes an ovum, or egg, which carries X chromosome, then the child born will be a girl, or female. This is because the child will have XX combination of sex chromosomes. If a sperm carrying Y chromosome fertilizes an ovum, or egg, which carries X chromosome, then the child born will be a boy, or male. This is because the child will have XY combination of sex chromosomes.